The 2020 presidential election may be 18 months away, but there's already a fascinating race on for the Democratic presidential nominee. But not because of a diverse range of policy ideas on offer from the candidates. No, it's the level to which each candidate must prostrate themselves before the altar of intersectional progressivism. And there's an interesting inverse relationship between your level of intersectionality and the degree of self-flagellation that you must exhibit to purify yourself. As this great article in Commentary Magazine notes, A campaign message presumes a unity of purpose among constituents, some shared vision for the nation. Today's left, however, is atomised. It's a constellation of identity-based grudge peddlers with each racial, ethnic and gender identity competing in an endless game of rock, paper, scissors that they call intersectionality. In the identity sweepstakes, a straight black female beats a gay white male who beats a straight white male and so on. This means that if you're a democratic hopeful, your makeup is the message. You run on your identity, and that identity dictates a personalised list of grievances and confessions. Those higher up the identity chain have more grievances. Those lower down offer more confessions. And if you can't compete, you promise free goods and services. That's the game. And so Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders have their work cut out for them. There is no level of apologetics that will completely absolve a candidate of that reprehensible combination of being old, white, straight and male. At least Beto is relatively young for a politician. And let's not forget woke. It's constructive criticism. It, it, it has already made me a better candidate. Not only will I not say that again, um, <laughs> But, but I'll be much more thoughtful going forward in, in the way that um, I talk about our marriage and also the way in which I acknowledge the truth of the criticism that I have enjoyed white privilege. But a gig has the redeeming feature of being gay, but he's also religious, which just makes him confused. And Andrew Yang can at least play the race card, although Asian privilege is already under attack from the wokerati. Of course, if you're a woman, you automatically rank higher because you're a woman. Although given that we now know Pocahontas isn't really Pocahontas, she hasn't got much else going for her. Kirsten Gillibrand is in the same boat, although she has the added benefit of being a man-hater, which is popular these days. Tulsi Gubbard has a higher intersectionality score because she's part Samoan. Cory Booker is a black male, so that trumps white woman and Asian male and just edges out Latino male Julian Castro, if I have my intersectionality correct. But of course it doesn't trump black woman. And black woman doesn't trump horizontally challenged black woman. Back to the article. In the identity game, Joe Biden can't even make the tryouts. He's a straight white male senior citizen. Not only doesn't he rank on the grievance scale, he's old enough to have been an adult when institutional prejudice was a reality in this country. That puts his privilege score off the charts. If that's not enough, there's his well-documented penchant for massaging and sniffing female acquaintances. With all that baggage, it makes sense that he's trying to appeal to something bigger than identity politics. But the author of this piece could not have foreseen Biden's masterstroke move. You see, Biden is so keen to prove his progressive credentials, he's hired a senior advisor that doesn't even want him in the Democratic leadership. Now, if you're not familiar with Simone Sanders, let me give you a refresher course. Here she is in various media appearances just after the Democrats lost the last election. But here's the issue. Howard Dean is also on record maligning young people and millennials, telling those Bernie folks they just need to get in line and maligning Bernie Sanders. And that is not what we need. In my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party is diverse and it should be reflected as so in our leadership and throughout the, the staff at the, top, at the highest levels, from the vice chairs to the secretaries, all the way down to the people working in the offices at the DNC. I think we need to have a robust discussion about this. And I think we need to hear more from all the candidates. Jamie Harrison in South Carolina, he's great too. He has done real party building, but everybody doesn't necessarily know Jamie and they want to know what it is that he stands for. So yeah. I want to hear more from everybody. I'm here for the millennials and the brown folks. And in case you're wondering if she just misspoke, this is what she had to say about the white guy getting pulled from his car and beaten by black people because he voted for Donald Trump. And a hate crime is not the same thing as protesting. We have to be very deliberate about and that. And what do you say? To, what do you say to the people who are who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh my goodness, poor Trump. white people! Please, oh my, stop. Stop it, Carl. What I say to people that protest is that, first of all, apparently there has That's never been protesting. an acceptable... Dragging well, pardon me, car and pardon them, me there has never been an acceptable form of protest. Remember, she was Bernie Sanders' press secretary during his presidential run in 2016. And that's probably where he got this line from. 
When you're white, you don't know what it's like to be living in a ghetto. You don't know what it's like to be poor. You don't know what it's like to be hassled when you walk down the street or you get dragged out of a car. And I believe that as a nation in the year 2016, we must be firm in making it clear we will end institutional racism and reform a broken criminal justice system. So is Joe Biden's self-loathing move to hire someone that doesn't even want him in the Democratic leadership enough to satisfy woke progressives? I doubt it, as the title of this article states. Being progressive means never having to accept, I'm sorry. There is no level of woke that will be enough to satisfy the regressives, but it will be fascinating to watch the Democratic hopefuls sacrifice themselves on the altar of intersectionality over the coming months. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.